the story of the first Americans, and the story of the ancient white migrations. What you are looking at is the oldest skull ever found in both North and South America. This skull was originally discovered on the outskirts of what is today in Mexico City, Mexico. The most intriguing aspect of the skull is that it is long and narrow and typically Caucasian in appearance, like the heads of white, Western Europeans today. That is a direct quote from an article by a journalist, not an anthropologist, named Steve Connor who wrote that article in 2002. What the makers of the first Americans video failed to quote from that article was the words of one of the most prestigious physical anthropologists of our time, Professor Chris Stringer, the head of human origins at the Natural History Museum in London. Quote, I personally haven't found the solitary and Pinyon connection claims very convincing. For a start, there are lots of examples in archaeology where various artifacts from different parts of the world can end up looking similar even though they have different origins. Most humans in the world at that time were long-headed and it doesn't surprise me that Penyon woman, at 13,000 years old, is also long-headed. End quote. In other words, the trend in all humans, the ancestors of Asians, Europeans, Africans, and Native Americans, during that time period was to be long-headed, dolichocephalic. The ancient skulls found in the Americas were not some imaginary Caucasoid population. They were archaic Native Americans ancestors of today's Native Americans. The mongoloid look, seen in some, not all, Native Americans and Asians, doesn't even appear in Asia, or the Americas until around 9,000 years ago. Racialists must believe they were leprechauns who just magically appeared out of nowhere. Of course, if racialists paid attention to the news they would have known that in May of 2003, Dr. Sylvia Gonzalez, of Britain's Liverpool John Moores University, announced that her DNA study of Penyon woman confirmed she had an Asian origin, just like modern Native Americans. Of course, craniometric studies such as that of Dr. Gonzalez Jose, in 2006, matched up Penyon woman with the modern Piracu, from Baja California. A study of the Piracu DNA in 2006 by Dr. Gonzalez showed that they had typical Native American mitochondrial DNA. Penyon woman one of the oldest skulls found in the Americas was an ancestor of today's Native Americans. Now let's look at the Kennewick Man and Lucia claims. A nearly complete skeleton was found along the Columbia River in Kennewick, Washington. Dr. James Chatters, forensic anthropologist and first scientist to examine Kennewick Man stated, quote, on the physical characteristics alone, he could fit on the streets of Stockholm without causing any kind of notice or on the streets of Jerusalem or New Delhi. This is a first glance, so I don't have a sense of time on him. All I have is just his physical features to work with. Very long, narrow brain case. Fairly distinct brow. And a nose that just jumps off his face. Very pronounced nose. These are all characteristics more often see on Western Eurasian skeletons. Dr. Chatters, who was a little-known anthropologist of no marked repute became famous overnight because of his foolish claims of Kennewick Man. Of course, to Chatters, a face like that of known Native American activist and actor, Wes Studi, must be European because he has a long narrow skull shape and his nose just jumps off his face. If we want to buy into all these craniometric claims, then we should consider the fact that Kennewick Man is one lone individual, not a statistical sampling of various individuals. So finding which population average might be closest is irrelevant. We can look at Howell's database and find which individuals are closest in proportions to Kennewick Man overall. The closest cranial comparison is not Ainu, Norse, or any other old world skull, it is a 27-year-old Eskimo skull. So much for the craniometric claim that Kennewick Man was European. The fact of the matter is that all ancient North American skulls fall within the Native American range overall and even the more extreme variations are still explainable as plesiomorphic features that evolved into the present Native Americans. More importantly, all have been found on the western USA and Mexico, not the East Coast. Now on to the Lucia as African claims. The Brazilian finds show that the New World was discovered tens of thousands of years earlier than previously believed. 
and certainly well before the time of the American Indians. But who then were these pioneers? A much earlier wave of Mongoloids? Or another race altogether? Prehistoric skulls were found buried in layers of soil, nine to 12,000 years old. They are the oldest skulls in the Americas. And this is the oldest of them all. The skull of a young woman, nicknamed Luthia by scientists. Walter Nevis is a physical anthropologist at Sao Paulo University in Brazil. He has been using a standard and reliable archaeological measure, the shape of the skull, to find out what race she belonged to. He fully expected Luthia to be a mongoloid, an ancestor of the American Indians. But then he fed the measurements into the computer. When we start running the computer and uh, seeing the results, uh, it was amazing because we realized that uh, it was not showing just people to be mongoloid. In fact, the analysis was showing just people was anything except mongoloids. Who then was Luthia and where did she come from? The first stage was to perform a three-dimensional CAT scan of Luthia's skull in order to build a replica. The cast was then given to Richard Neve of the University of Manchester to recreate her features. That to me is a Negro face. Of course this study was done even before Penyon Woman was found, as seen by the dates claimed. Lucia is obviously not the oldest skull found anymore. Even Penyon Woman has been superseded by New Mexican finds. This old study and subsequent TV special showed the racialist mentalities that pervade some anthropological studies to this day. Dr. Neves doesn't mention that in his supposedly accurate craniometrical study, only four Native American groups were included. The Northern Eskimo and Aracara, the Californian Santa Cruz, and the Peruvian Yayos. Not one of these native populations were of tropical rainforest Native Americans. Richard Neves the forensic artist, failed to mention that craniofacial structures cannot give all the details of soft tissue and hence it is up to the forensic artist to use creative license to fill in the blanks. Based on Dr. Neves conclusions, he added soft tissue that would make the facial reconstruction look more African and, or, Australian, as seen by both his reconstructions of Lucia. None took into account that there are Native American populations in the tropics that have those same proportions as shown by Dr. Atui's studies. As modern studies have shown, craniofacial measurements are not as reliable as once thought to predict ancestral relations between populations because craniofacial plasticity is subject to change by the forces of the environment. 